Let me start by sincerely thanking my colleague, uh, CES Prof. Kithure Kindiki, for finding time to be here and also for mobilizing this wonderful team. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Awangao officials, for being here this morning. This is indeed a great demonstration of unity of purpose we share as a government. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, as you well know, uh, we have had significant progress in the health sector. However, there are some key health outcomes which we have still not yet gotten the appropriate target. I love stories, and so I will tell you a story. So while working um, in the uh, slums, some of the slums in Nairobi, I worked in Madare, and I remember taking care of one uh, person living with HIV. That was a widowed woman, her husband had died from HIV, and she was left with four children. And she had developed complications uh, in Madare. So we had to um, you know, support her because she could not do her routine duty, which was washing clothes in Isili, as she took care of her children. But I remember one day when I sat with her, and she asked me one question, Doctor, ni dawa ni tanunua? Ni watoto nitasomesha, ni chakula nitanunua kwa nyumba, ni rent nitalipa, ama nitaenda kinyata kuonekana. And so that really touched me, and that is why we mobilized uh, funds to support her. I also think of a 50-year-old man in the village who has that arthritis of his knee, and he has to rub kaluma on that knee because he cannot afford to go to a facility and get appropriate services. He is uh, energetic and he can take care of his family, but because of that knee pain, he cannot do that. I'm equally reminded of the patients who are on dialysis, and some of them, you know, have had catastrophic expenditure. I remember even of a man I was seeing in Kenyatta who gathered his title deeds, you know, gave his wife, told her, go and sell so that I can be treated. And seeing this man a year later, I wondered how much had he had to part with in order to get treatment. And once everything, or once he's deprived of all this, then he will lose his life, you see, and leave his wife a widow and children without money. So these are real stories in our country. And with the Kenya Kwanzaa um, priority, that is the bottom-up economic uh, transformation agenda, one of the priorities being universal health coverage. It resonates with me, and I believe it resonates with each one of you. Disease can come knocking at anyone's door. It does not know if you are elite or you are not. It can come at any time. And so universal health care coverage is critical for us so that each of us as Kenyans can be able to access affordable quality care. Okay? And so with the four pillars, one of them was the sustainable health financing mechanism so that the Ministry of Health has a self-sufficient and autonomy in terms of finances so that they can, we can always have money and we are not depending on the exchequer for health service delivery. Equally, we'll be having a digital platform and that would support in efficiency, transparency and accountability, which is part of our national values. And also, we intend to have um, improved supply chain of the health products, meaning that Madawa Yafike Mashinani effectively and we are able to monitor so that each one of us can access the products and equally the healthcare workers. And so in 2023, the parliament enacted four laws upon which our UHC agenda is anchored, the Primary Health Care Act, the Social Health Insurance Act, Digital Health Act and Facility Improvement. And we are currently at various stages of implementing this law so that we can give Kenyans quality, affordable health care. And with regards to the social health insurance, we, uh, we've, uh, social health authority was formed, uh, which will also um, be able to address uh, these gaps. So I'd like to congratulate you 
as Prof Kithure Kindiki has said, regarding agriculture. 6.5 million farmers within two weeks. Please, let's give ourselves a hand of applause. Congratulations, congratulations. And I ask myself, how much more touching each Kenyan? The 12 million households that our Prof has clearly talked about. And so your support will touch each heart, each Kenyan heart. Yeah? It is indeed a privilege, an honor, an obligation for each one of us if all our people can access quality, affordable care. And so, ladies and gentlemen, all these changes we are making will be meaningless unless Kenyans know about them, number one, and two, take full advantage. The reason we are here today, because of the tremendous work, the tremendous experience, the good connection, the prompt sensitization that um, you have been able to, uh, to do at, um, down at community level, we really need your expertise. We need to leverage on your platform so that we can sensitize, inform the community about the benefits because there's a lot going on and they are not informed so that they can know the benefits, they can register and they are able to access affordable quality care. At community level, the um, message has not reached uh, quite well. The coverage is not good. At the higher level, there's a lot of things going on in social media that may change the vision of Kenyans. They will not understand that this is for their benefit. We need you to inform them that SHA is for their benefit. They need to register so that they can access care. So we need you to support us in educating the public on their responsibility and also for them to register in order to access um, care. So at this point, the priority, again, is to get all households registered um, and make contributions in readiness for 1st of October. So we kindly request that you engage through the village elders, chiefs, and community health promoters on share rollout. Share the message at every public forum as well. And um, you can present it in the barazas, funerals, weddings, school events, etc. You know your area, and I believe you'll be able to map out and action. So our target, as, as has been said, 60% of households, which means 12 million households. And so when you look at households, we expand to around 36 million Kenyans. And we hope we can achieve this by the 1st October. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to say as I complete is indeed an honor, a privilege, and an obligation for me and for all of us as Kenyans to bring this home, to ensure that all Kenyans are able to access affordable quality care. And so please be ambassadors for the SHA and UHC, and we can take our country forward by ensuring that all Kenyans are able to access quality, affordable care without facing financial hardship as it is at the moment. So thank you.